It's ended in a very entertaining game in the end, Scott. It's finished 3-3 here at Upper Park against the inform Hampton and Richmond. Where do we start with that game? Cool. Good question. <laughs> um, so soon after the game, I feel happy that we've come away with something. I think it would have been um, an absolute travesty if we hadn't. Um, I thought we were really good value um, for our lead in the first half. Probably should have been 3 or 4 nil up. Um, and I don't think that would have been unfair. I'll try and be as honest as I can. Um, second half, 2-0, they talk about it and cliche it, um, that it's a difficult scoreline. Um, and for some reason it is. Um, obviously, we probably stepped back a little bit in the second half and trying to hold on to our lead. Um, absolute sucker punch, the first goal, taking deflection, gone in the top corner. Second goal is obviously a soft one, um, easy cross, and then it's gone in between me and Temi. Um, and I've just yeah lost my man, so I hold man up for that one. And third one set piece, and you look at it and you think how are we three two down um, all of a sudden. But we're playing against a really good side um, who I'm beating in 16 I think now. So we've got to realise that we can't take our foot off the gas, and we need to be on it for 90 minutes. Um, lo and behold, I thought we got what we deserved um, at the end. I think there were some crucial moments in the game um, towards the end of the first half when it's two nil. Um, I thought it should have gone three and four, but their keeper. Listen, unless I've seen it differently, I think their keeper's by far and away the man of the match today. Um, they might see things differently and I don't want to sound stupid, but yeah, I'm, overall I'm delighted that we've got a point in the end, um, but disappointed that we didn't come away with all three. Yeah, it started fairly slowly the game, but then we kind of lent onto them quite a bit and then we raced into that 2-0 lead um, and Ash with the deflected effort that entered the goal. Uh, and then Mikel, who was very unlucky actually not to have scored the goal himself, yeah. but then Nathan Minas there just tucking it away for the 2-0 lead. And then you briefly mentioned there, we had a massive, massive chance right before the break too, actually, in fact. Uh, Nathan would burst through on goal. Uh, it didn't quite seem to be firing, firing away today, basically. Yeah, Nathan's really disappointed, um, but he gives us so much, um, and I'm not disappointed. Um, he's done a lot in the game today. He's run his socks off again, and he'll score goals. Um, he's obviously disappointed that he's not able to get us across the line because that's what he prides himself on. Uh, but I won't go home tonight and think about Nathan missing a couple of chances. Um, we're all in it together. Um, and eventually, obviously, we've been dug out of a hole in the last minute, um, which is a great way to get a point. I said to Yellow and Chrissy with about five minutes to go, there's a way to lose a game. And it's not by being 2-0 up at half-time and losing 3-2. That would have been a real tough one to take. When the final whistle went, I heard the crowd and there was a big cheer. Um, so that shows that it's probably a good point in the end, getting a, getting a goal so late on. Um, character, all of that sort of stuff comes into play today and we've got that in abundance. And I think the thing that we probably lacked today was maybe opportunity to change the shape and formation with personnel, um, missing a lot of players. So we had to pick a team that was square pegs in round holes a little bit um, and we've done it and we've come out on, a, on top at the end by getting a point. Um, and going away happy, whereas they'll probably go away a bit deflated um, with a team that's been kind of thrown together today. Um, we were waiting on Johnny Goddard to see if he was available and his missus has given birth yesterday, so congratulations to them. And that's far more important than any football match, bringing a baby into the world. So, um, yeah, it's days like that that we didn't plan for. Um, a couple of lads unavailable, a couple of lads injured. So, overall, I'm really, really pleased. Uh, they're a really good side. Uh, they move the ball well. Uh, their fronts were a handful. You've got the big lad and the little lad. and it's a really difficult combination to play against at times. Um, so yeah, overall delighted. Uh, we, we go away probably with a spring in our step and they're probably a little bit disappointed. And just to take it back then to the start of the second half, it seemed like Slough coped pretty fairly well with what looked like a bit of a, an onslaught from them, but it didn't really happen. We then conceded the first goal. What for you did they change that made Slough so, not defensive, but a little bit more apprehensive of how they were coming forward. Yeah, we spoke at half time and we said that if we're going to concede a goal today, make sure that we concede it from across and we don't get hurt through the middle of the pitch. Um, they have a load overload in the middle. Um, and then I felt quite content defending crosses because I think the first half we dealt with it really well. Um, second half we didn't deal with it as well as we did um, in the first half. So, yeah, it's probably caught um, between the two in terms of maybe getting out to their full backs quick enough, um, getting the lads to cover distance. Um, and it was tricky. We've played with two wing backs today with Joe and Jammers um, who haven't played there this season. It's always been Josh and Ty. And it's just getting that understanding. It's a lot different as playing as a right back or a left back. Um, you're asking people to jump out of their slots and pockets and go and be aggressive um, against the opposition. And we probably didn't do it well enough, um, but that's probably getting used to playing in that formation and personnel. 
Um, and it just shows what we're up against today. So we're playing, we're playing people in positions they've not played before for us. Um, so we can't be too disappointed. Um, I'll be gutted when I go home tonight and see that we were 2-0 up. Um, I think the game should have been done, but overall it keeps on beating run going um, against a fantastic side. Um, I think they've got some really, really good players. They've got a big squad. Um, we certainly don't at the moment. You saw we had, what, one 17-year-old um, and two 18-year-olds on the bench today that are great footballers. Um, are they quite ready to step into the National League South at the moment when it's sort of helter-skelter and it's physical? Probably not. Um, it's going to take time. So we had Gary and Slav and yeah, great news that Slav's come on and got a goal. Um, he's shown a great attitude over the past couple of weeks and I'm absolutely over the moon for him to get that. Yeah, I was just going to ask you about that. There was a great moment for him at the end and then the, uh, the bumper attendance we had here today, over a thousand here at Arbor Park today. It was great to see, wasn't it, for him to get that moment? Yeah, it was. Um, the way that he celebrated as well, delighted for him. And he showed real composure to finish it, um, taking a touch, I think it was off his chest and then volleyed it in. I thought at one point the keeper had made another save. Um, he's a really good keeper as well. So he made some great saves against us last year at Cheshunt. I just said to him at the end of the game there, I said, why do you always pull off saves against us? So, um, yeah, we've, we've met a team in form today. Um, and overall, I think we can be proud of what we've given. Um, so there's a lot of positives, of course, uh, but people will go away and say that we've thrown away a 2-0 lead. But we've got to realise where we're at and where we've been, uh, where we are in the league at the moment. I've looked at some of the results that we're in the early kickoff. Um, it's another point gained on a couple of the sides. Um, and then we get a chance to sort of roll into the game next week against them, um, having drawn today. And I think psychologically it puts us in a better place because if we lose today going into that game next week, we go there probably feeling a bit um, disheartened, um, low in confidence. So, yeah, we'll, we'll take it and uh, we'll move on to New Year's Day. Yeah, as you say, part two of the, uh, the tie, I guess, I'll, I'll say, on the New Year's Day. Is there any news you can give us at all on any of those players that are kind of recovering and getting back into the squad, the likes of, you know, Tyrese Dice yeah. uh, and Josh as well? Yeah, Josh will be back. Um, he's got um, family commitments. Johnny, hopefully, will be back. Um, Leon as well? Leon will be back um, and hopefully Tyrese will be back. So that's four <laughs> possible starters for us, um, which will be huge. Of course it will. Um, Josh, Tyrese and Johnny have pretty much started every game this season. Um, but that doesn't take away from the lads that have come in and played. Um, I love each and every single one of them. Um, I back them uh, every single day of the week. So yeah, there's no issues with people that have come in and played today. Um, they all gave a, like, a good shift, they played well. Um, but obviously having the consistency and the um, continuity of picking the same team um, or picking the players that have been used to playing, it, it certainly helps, of course it does. But um, there's no issues with me having to pick other players. Um, I love being able to pick people like Joe Dandy that have come into the side, Jammers has come into the side and played a different position. Um, so yeah, we've got a good squad, um, probably not the strength and depth that we need, but we're strong probably for out 13, 14, 15 players, um, whereas other clubs might have a few more than that. Cheers, Scott. We'll see you in New Year's Cheers, Day. Cheers, Con.